I'm Jani Judley, the therapist in my pocket. I'm a spiritual seeker on a journey and an adventure, and I'm also a psychotherapist here in the UK. So I talk about spiritual things from the perspective of an awakening woman who happens to have a psychotherapist in her pocket. And I talk and share with spiritual seekers all over the world. You can get to know me better on my Instagram page, at Jani Judley, or my Facebook page, The Therapist in My Pocket. You can also learn far more about me and connect with me directly on my website, Jani Judley, The Therapist in My Pocket, dot com. For now, oh my goodness. thank you for showing up and is there company. any hope Welcome for someone like me to Pocket Talk? What a question. What a Today's statement. question is this. What a belief. Dear therapist in my feels. pocket, I am a bottomless How pit. much pain and Nothing suffering. Nothing ever feels enough. I Let's feel constantly empty. Let's open I can't this up. seem to hold on to anything good. Let's get to no the matter bottom. how hard I try. Oh, Affirmations don't help the because they just feel hollow. That leads us to call us. I know I have to find gratitude, speak. but so much has happened. I'm interested to notice my reaction. I can't seem to get over to trying to the loss help and rejection. The person who wrote this message. I feel to me. miserable and different. And I'm interested because and I know I'm driving I know that everyone the sense away. For me of I can't forgive or let go. Inadequacy. I dwell on everything. Um, How can I change the way I am? Of not being able. Is there any to help? help? To being Someone found like wanting, me. to failing, is actually what this person possibly evokes in everyone around her. Because it's what this person actually feels themselves. That there is no help, that there is no one to help, there is no way of escaping this impossible prison that they feel they have found themselves in, and from which there is no way out. I know, from years of experience, that when I meet someone in the room with me as a psychotherapist who says these things and feels this reality, it's usually because, way back in their history, there has been the experience of abandonment and of rejection of not having been important, of not having been seen. And they live with that expectation that this experience, so painful, so destructive and dismissive of all that they are, will be repeated again in life over and over. Such an experience is so profound that it can easily become our identity. It becomes all that we are, all that we ever will be, all that we can ever hope for. This is who we are, a bottomless pit. This is the tragic figure that everyone backs away from. This is the person that no one wants to try to help or go close to because it feels as if everything that they offer just gets lost. Everything that they try to do to help counts for nothing, makes no difference. And that is this person's experience too. What a nightmare of a situation, what a vicious circle to find yourself caught in. However, tough does not mean impossible. And in answer to the question, is there any hope for someone like me? My answer is a resounding yes. But that means doing life very differently. It means really understanding the mechanisms that have got stuck inside and with which the person involved has identified. So I'm going to talk about this again. I'm going to talk about the message again, and I'm going to reinterpret it. 
let's give it a go. Dear therapist in my pocket, I am a bottomless pit. The person in the message states this as if it is their identity, as if it's their whole being, all that they are. Let's question that. If I had broken my arm, would I say, I am a broken arm? If I had a cold or a sore throat, would I say, I am a cold and a sore throat? Would be more accurate, wouldn't it, to say, I have broken my arm, or I am experiencing the symptoms of a cold and sore throat? Do you see how crucial that distinction is? It's the difference between saying, this is who I am, and this is what I'm feeling or experiencing. Now that's the first thing that this person who describes themselves as a bottomless pit is actually struggling to do, to differentiate between who they really are and what they are experiencing and feeling. And so when this person talks about someone like me, there are certain beliefs inherent in that. The first is, what I feel is who I am. I am my feelings. Whatever I'm feeling is who I am. This person isn't remotely alone. So many of us carry this same belief. What we feel is who we are. And that is at the absolute core of the difficulty we have when we say, I don't know who I am. Because if we identify ourselves as our feelings, and our feelings inevitably are constantly changing, then because we seem to be our feelings, we are constantly changing. It feels that our identity is constantly changing. We don't know from one moment to another who we are. We usually struggle with this if we have had very little or no help growing up to work with our feelings, to identify our feelings, to realise that our feelings can be observed and can be contained and talked about, processed, even changed. If we've not had that help from an adult who can do that for themselves, we grow up with absolutely no notion at all that we have any control over our feelings or that our feelings are not who we are. And so, because we feel bottomless, because we feel that there is no way of holding on to things and that good experiences just drain away and can't be held on to, because we feel that we are bottomless and that our feelings are who we are, we describe ourselves as bottomless. Alongside I am my feelings is another belief, and that is I am what has happened to me. Now, our experiences feel to be who we are, particularly when, again, we've had no help to process those feelings. They have been painful, traumatic, and we've been left with experiences that no one has helped us to work through, talk about, process, come through to the other side of. And so they feel so big and bodily that we don't know how to move beyond them. We can't separate who we are from what we have known and what we have felt. And when we've had no such help, we go round and round in those memories, reliving, revisiting, if only, why, how could that happen, that should not have happened, 
Round and round and round we go, so painfully, so desperately, so hopelessly, because we cannot find a solution. We live in the past, we focus on the past, we go over and over what has happened, identifying with it more and more as who we are, and we find it impossible to move beyond it. And so, back to the question, is there any help, any hope, for someone like me? Absolutely, yes, there is. But we have to work, first of all, on changing a few things, on changing some beliefs and perceptions. So, let's start with, I am what I'm feeling, and I am what has happened to me. And let's replace it with a different statement. Let's make it a bit more complicated. Let's say something like, I am someone who has experienced certain events, who has, as a result of those events, experienced certain reactions and feelings And without my realising it, I have formed some beliefs and expectations, some perceptions and assumptions based upon those experiences and the feelings I had before, during and after those experiences happened. Then let's add to that statement another, which is, Because I have had no help to know what to do with my reactions to those experiences, because I have had no help to process and move through what happened to me and how I felt as a consequence of what happened to me, I have become stuck in an endless cycle of replaying those experiences and my reactions and feelings to them over and over again, to the point where I am virtually constantly living in memory rather than in present reality. For many people, that discovery is quite a shock. But understanding the effect of that is crucial if we are to move through to the other side of experiences that have affected us as profoundly as this and in this way. So where to begin? Well, first, we have to learn to become the observer of our experience rather than identifying with it. We have to know that we can look on, to think about it, to process it rather than to be lost in the feelings and reactions to what happened. Secondly, we have to stop telling the old story in the old ways. We have to talk about the story as if we are able to observe it, think about it, process it and distance ourselves from it, because actually it is an old story, and in the telling and retelling, the story has become very fixed. All the roles, all the players, the way it happened and why it happened, all have become part of the story, and the story usually belongs to a very little and young mind, and not to the adult mind can think in a very different way that we are now. Again, that fact can seem surprising, that the story that we're telling is the story very often that a child found of telling it, with a child's motives and reasons for why people did the things they did, for what it meant or said about them, and what it left them with. It's usually an unsophisticated story, 
lacking in complexity, lacking in the wisdom that an adult mind could bring to understanding all the different layers of what happened. When I first suggest to people that they might tell the story differently, they often feel resistant, angry, like I'm taking something away. That something is their investment in the story as they told it in their younger years, in that unsophisticated way that a child tries to make sense of a reality far too complicated and complex for a child's mind to understand, but which has become their story and therefore their identity. A story with goodies and baddies and very simple motives and reasons for things happening. That's the story we have to give up and giving that up is what frees us. Sometimes people say to me, but that's not the story I'm being asked to give up. You're asking me to give up my story of what has happened to me as an adult. And I invite them to investigate what that experience that they had as an adult that feels so hard to give up actually repeats. Because the actual story that we struggle to give up is the story that we couldn't understand. It's our first story, what I would call our point of pain, from which all other stories have evolved, and the way in which we have come to understand and frame and cast every other story in our life. So, firstly, we have to stop telling the old story in the old ways. Secondly, we have to accept that perfect does not exist. We have to accept the fact of imperfection, that there can be no shoulds or oughts, but rather there is simply what was, what had to be, what actually happened. Now that's incredibly challenging because so many things in life feel to be unfair. We look at other people and other people's lives and we think they have this, it went this way for them and therefore we say it should not have happened like this for me. This ought to have been my life. Trouble is, while we stay invested in that belief that things should have gone a different way, they ought to have been different. We prevent both the growth that can come from looking at all we learned from what we've been through and the gratitude, believe it or not, that can come from realising that we survived and that we have become more as a direct result of what we have lived. Finding that we can do this relieves us of another burden and the writer of this message speaks of that burden when she says, I know I'm driving everyone away. I can't forgive or let go. I dwell on everything. Let's just take a minute to think about that pushing everyone away and why we do that. When we are invested in telling the old story in the old way, we also project that into our current and future reality. We both expect that the same will happen, but also we set it up so very often to happen in the same old way. So we test people out. We become convinced that they will do the same in the end. And we push and we goad and we test till they do in fact do 
what we were convinced they would do all along. And therefore it feels like we have confirmed that the old story in the old way will always be our lot. It will always be the way our life goes. These ways of being actually mean that we become someone extremely rigid, unable to take on board the possibility of other explanations, other motives, a more complex set of explanations for what might have happened. We become invested in the old story, in the old ways, and in a very profound and concrete way, we therefore prevent ourselves from being able to reach for the healing that we so badly long for. So where do we go from here? Well, firstly, we have to change the way that we identify ourselves. We have to start to identify as someone who can be empowered, who doesn't have to passively describe themselves as what has happened to them or what they're feeling, but can rather say, this is who I am becoming, this is what I'm working on, who can take responsibility for their own growth rather than making their suffering someone else's responsibility. We have to realise that change and transformation are the keys to growing and evolving and creating our own happiness in the world. It's only when we let go of our story, and remember this is the old story told in the old ways, and instead we allow our story to be of a human being becoming more, learning, evolving, growing, becoming ever wiser, ever stronger, ever more resourceful. And we allow that to be our identity. Then, rather than being someone who is living in our past, identified with our past, we become someone who is on an adventure of discovery, a spiritual adventure with a small s of forever discovering, learning, growing, evolving, becoming what they came here to be, a human being, but also a spiritual being on a human journey. There truly is no such thing as a bottomless pit and there really is no such state as this is who I am. Rather, there is these are the experiences that I have lived through. These have been their gift of growth and evolution. This is the adventure that I am set out upon and this is the journey I will continue to make.
You've been listening to Chani Judley, the therapist in my pocket. I'm a spiritual seeker on a journey and an adventure, and I'm also a psychotherapist here in the UK. So I talk about spiritual things from the perspective of an awakening woman who happens to have a psychotherapist in her pocket. And I talk and share with spiritual seekers all over the world. You can get to know me better on my Instagram page, at Johnny Judley, or my Facebook page, The Therapist in My Pocket. You can also learn far more about me and connect with me directly on my website, Johnny Judley, The Therapist in My Pocket. Com. If you'd like to talk with me more, or to work with me, or feature in a live stream or podcast with me, you can get in touch directly from any of my social media pages or on my website or directly via email using Janny at Janny Judley the Therapist in My Pocket dot com. For now, thank you for your company and for showing up. Look forward to talking with you soon. Big love.